Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Icon. Thank you so much for checking out another episode here. In today's video, we are going to get you set for Championship Sunday. We're going to go back through, talk about the matches from Saturday, who played well, who didn't, who struggled, and then we're going to get you through my predictions for Championship Sunday. We're going to get everything set again. I am your one-stop shop for all things Call of Duty League. But without further ado, this is my predicted bracket. This is what I had going into Sunday and Needless to say, it didn't really go how I expected it to go. So before we get into each and one, each and every one of these breakdowns here, all of these stats that you're going to be looking at is from Cam Allen on Twitter. Just want to make sure that I'm giving him a shout out before we get going here. But first matchup of the day was the one that we were all looking for. It was Dallas versus Atlanta. And what can you say? Um, I now first thing is that this was a really impressive match for Atlanta here, but everything was close, right? We look at the Gunrunner hardpoint, 250 to 219, basically one rotation that goes either way. Map 11, Gunrunner search and destroy, Atlanta clutched up as they usually do. I've been saying it all year. And then the Gunrunner hardpoint, they end up winning by five. So even though this was close or if you look at this at first glance, you're thinking, oh, this is a 3-0, good job from Atlanta or whatever. Um, Dallas played pretty well in this one overall. So Atlanta gets the 3-0, which puts them through. So I was incorrect here. I really did think that um, Dallas, just the way that they've played recently, we're going to make it through. So that's going to put Dallas into our semi there, and it's going to put Atlanta into our final bracket stage underneath. Moving on from there, next matchup was the matchup between Chicago and Toronto. And even though this looks like a 3-2, it really was only a 2-2. This is the second event in a row when somebody, it's like the Petrograd curse all of a sudden. Pristini's power went out. He wasn't able to play in map four. And that's really tough because we all know how good Toronto has been throughout the entire course of the season when it comes to search and destroy. So just kind of giving up that map four, not being able to play that out when that's a map that Chicago is pretty good on you would have had to have think that they would have been into the semifinal so this is a really bad beat but if you're looking at the scores overall they played pretty decent nobody really popped off scump had an unbelievable map well i don't want to say unbelievable but he had a really big turnaround from where he played last weekend so last weekend was like a 0.8 ish 0.75 ish and this weekend he's been above one basically in every one of their matches um, but rc's 1.0 envoy 1.0 Formal 0.95, Pristini 0.95, and then Scump with the 1.1. So even though <clears throat> it went against them, they weren't able to get that game for a win. Um, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, right? This is just what happens in online Call of Duty. And since they didn't replay the last time this happened to Seattle, they obviously, even if they would have changed kind of what their approach was, they couldn't do it in this one because then everybody would think that, well, the league is just favoring Chicago and that just would have been a really bad look. So with this one, I had Chicago as the team that made it out and it didn't end up happening. So we're going to put Toronto through. We are going to move Toronto's name here. We're going to put Chicago into the semifinal. Now, as we move on from here, third matchup of the day was the one between Minnesota and Florida and Florida came out and they just really took care of business. First map here on Azir Cave, Minnesota clutched up, did a really nice job of winning map one. Ramaza search and destroy Florida is really good at, so they bounced back in this, won the Dom by about 50, and then they were just able to win one more rotation in the Ramaza hardpoint as it rotated back to ruin second set of rotations. They were able to win this one by about 25. So overall, we just haven't seen Minnesota performing the way that they did early on in the year, right? Got a Rex back, bounced back, had a really good day, but in a matchup, where you are going against really good ARs in Pharaoh and Awakening and especially Skies from Florida, Assault can't have a .94. That's just not going to get it done, right? It's not good enough. So Alex had a subpar day. Asim actually played really well. Assault didn't play like you would expect him to play. And then Silly with a .82. So just nothing really stands out from the Minnesota side, whereas Pharaoh was off the charts, 1.4. Frosty, 1.2. Awakening, 1.3. Skies, 1.1. If you're looking at the kill department, 
they just kind of took over, right? So if we're looking here between the matchup between Minnesota and Florida, we correctly guessed Florida to make it through there. And then as we move on to the next matchup here, this is the one between OGLA and Seattle. And I think this is where OGLA started to find their footing, right? So they won the hard point, won the S and D, won the Hackney Yard Dom, came out. And even though the hard point and the, the, the Dom were pretty close, they still clutched up. And I think that was a big, important moment for Draza and Hollow, right? The more times you can throw yourself into those stressful situations, the better you're going to play moving on. On as you get matchups like they got here in the losers bracket final against Chicago. So next matchup was back over to group B. It was the matchup between Dallas and Florida. And again, 40 point win and hard point again, one rotation here or there, but Dallas clutches up map two went to a round 11 Dallas again, clutched up was able to win that last round. And then the Hackney yard Dom, um, Dallas won by about 20 or so. But if we're looking at kind of the overall KDs, everybody just played really well. Shotzi had a 1.3. He played extremely well. But Illy 1.0. Huke was right around a 1.0 at a 0.98. Krim a 1.0. Clay a 1.0. This was a really even series across the board. And Dallas just made it happen. So when it comes to this one, Dallas was the second team out. And they will face off against Toronto heading into day two, which gives us the one match that's left, probably the one that the majority of the people were a little bit upset with. But coming out, Chicago got lucky. They did win that one extra rotation. First of all, every single one of these maps was super close. So it was a really entertaining series to watch here. Chicago took map one by about 17. And then they didn't clutch up on the Ramaza search and destroy in round 11. Hackney Yard just wasn't really a great Dom map for them. And then the hard point on Hackney, they just they had control of both P2s on the first and second set of rotations. But as it rotated from P3 to P4 to P5, they just weren't able to come out on top. So give OGLA the credit where the credit is due. They end up against pretty big odds being the second team that makes it out of Group A, which sets us for our matchups as Toronto versus Dallas and Atlanta versus OGLA. Last thing that I'll say before I get into this, I just want to go ahead and point out that tomorrow, about 45 minutes before the matches start, I'm going to go live on my Twitch channel. So if you're not following me there, make sure you go follow me. It's right there at IconNationYT. And I'm also thinking about doing a watch party. So the plan is to have up a mini map. I can't show the whole screen, but I can show how the commentators are, what they're saying. And I'm hoping I can show the mini map because then we can talk a little bit about what's going on. So um, if you are not following me there, make sure you go follow me over there for some live action tomorrow as we get into championship Sunday. But back into our breakdown here of the semifinals. First one of the day is going to be Toronto versus Dallas. And for this one, Toronto has been playing pretty good, right? We outlined what they did above. But I think this is, first of all, an opportunity for Toronto to show that, you know what, we can hang with those top four teams. They showed it in the matchup against Chicago, even though I don't really know how much they actually did because there's a good chance that Chicago wins that hard point. But that's besides the point. Um, so this is an opportunity for them to bounce back and show that we're here going into champs. We can actually perform with these teams. But the way Shotzi's been playing, the way that the veteran ARs have been playing from Dallas, I just don't see it happening. So I'm going to go with Dallas here. It probably will be like a 3-1. I would lean towards giving the search and destroy towards Toronto. That's really their specialty, even though Dallas is really good at search. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to give this one to Dallas. I do think it'll be 3-1. If it goes to that map five, you could potentially see an upset here, right? If it goes to map five, Toronto's known for what they do in search and destroy. They're much better at search than they are at respawn. So we'll see. Um, but if I had to pick, I'm going to go with Dallas here. In the bottom one, this is a matchup I'm really excited for. So Atlanta has been playing lights out this entire event. I don't know what happened after that 3-0, that really bad matchup that they had with Chicago at the last event. 
but they've turned it around. Simp has been playing out of his mind. Priesta looks much better with the M4 than he did with the MP5. I think that's a really important change for him. And Abizi has been shredding. Being that entry man, really being one of the only ones that's playing super fast like that, I really think that it benefits him quite a bit. When it comes to OGLA, this is an opportunity. Again, very similar stance to what we took with Toronto, right? Toronto has that opportunity, so does OGLA. It's really new for their young roster, but Draza and Hollow so far, they've been right around 1.0 in every single matchup that they've played. So I'm excited to see if they can perform against a team like Atlanta. Really big win that they had over Chicago. Let's see if they can go back to back. Think about it. For OGLA to win this event, they would have had to have beaten Chicago, which they did. They had to beat Atlanta and then potentially match up and beat Dallas. Other thing that I'll say is that there really are some pretty big playoff implications here. So the discrepancy or the difference between Atlanta and Dallas is only 10 points. So there's an opportunity there for that to kind of switch hands depending on how Championship Sunday goes. And also between Toronto and OGLA, there's a chance that one of those teams makes it into the top eight and the other one doesn't. So there really are some pretty decent playoff indicators implications going into championship Sunday but for this matchup here I just don't see it out of OGLA yet Atlanta has been playing out of their minds so this is going to give us a matchup between Atlanta and Dallas heading into the final and again if we're looking at this one overall Shotzi has been playing really well Krim and Clay have been playing also really well they're probably playing the best that they've played all year not to mention, they are coming off a tournament event win. So they were, I think they only dropped one map in their last event. So this one has been a little bit more difficult with the win earlier from Atlanta. It was a quick 3-0. Uh, then when you look at Atlanta, I mean, what can you say? Simp is playing out of his mind. Priest has been playing great. Abizi, we just talked about those three. So it'll be interesting to see if you get the same maps overall that you had in the first matchup in um, early on in the day on Saturday, just because everything was so close, right? Even though it was a 3-0, we talked about it earlier, it was a 3-0, but each one of those maps really could have gone either way, depending on which clutch play was made. But when it comes to this one, I'm just a little bit more confident right now with what they did in day one with the Atlanta phase. I really do think that Atlanta's going to come through. They're going to pull this one out. They're going to kind of regain that number one spot that, I mean, let's be honest, as of late, they haven't looked great in scrims. Their last couple of events, they haven't looked like the beginning of the year Atlanta. I really do think that Atlanta's going to come out. They're going to assert their dominance. They're going to return to that number one form, and they're going to be that team overall that everybody fears going into the playoffs. I think Dallas and Atlanta, far and away the two best teams right now. So I can't wait. Hopefully this is the matchup we get. Imagine getting like a Toronto OGLA final. Anything is possible, but I'm going with Atlanta here. So down in the comments below, let me know. Do you agree? Do you think Atlanta is going to win? Do you think Dallas is going to pull through? Do you think any funny business happens with Toronto and OGLA? Let me know down in the comments. Who is your pick for championship Sunday. Again, make sure you follow me over there at twitch.tv slash icon nation YT for all content, getting you set leading up to the broadcast for championship Sunday. And with that guys, thank you so much for all the support recently. I super appreciate it. We're going to have about three and a half weeks or so leading up to playoffs. So make sure that you are tuned in every day. I'm going to be going through all the storylines, getting you guys set for playoffs and COD champs this year. So thank you guys so much. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, it helps out the channels. And with that, enjoy Championship Sunday. We will see you 